satisfying. That's a little much. What is up my dudes? Welcome back to my channel. So I am getting my thoughts together on all of my like year-end roundups and everything like that. And they're coming. They're coming probably like, we're gonna do the regrets video next, okay? It's gonna be a really fun, don't buy this kind of video. But today it's cold and it's rainy and I just wanna play with makeup <laughs> to like cheer myself up. And I have so much new stuff <laughs> to show you guys that like, I was gonna make dedicated videos about and stuff like that, but just, we're backed up to the end of the year and we're just gonna make this like one hypersaturated face of new makeup. So if that sounds fun to you, hang out. <laughs> Let's jump in. So the first thing that you guys haven't seen me use on camera yet is the new milk products that I got. I got them in my Sephora haul. This is the mini of the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. And I have such high hopes for milk, I do. But the first time that I used this with the Flex Foundation, I got a big old zip. <laughs> She's right there. <laughs> and I don't wanna blame it on that necessarily, but that's why we do the deep dives on the ingredients and things like that. It's always a learning process. But I did just buy a bunch of stuff from Rael Skincare. It's actually like, I think they're out of Korea. And I didn't realize that they're mainly like a period skincare company. They're made for like hormonal acne basically, but they have this serum, they have these little moisture drops, they have some face masks, and they also have little like hydrocolloid patches and then the little spiky patches. And I've started using their Good Chemistry Serum pretty regularly. And then um, their little spiky, I used the little spiky guy on there and he looks irritated. He looks mad about it. Like it's flat, but it definitely, I've never used one of the little spiky ones before, like a zit sticker or something. So it's a new experience for me. We'll see. I am also like musing. These are the kinds of things that keep me up at night, right? On like how to organize my end of the year videos this year because you know we have a lot of skincare, but I'm not sure if it's enough skincare to do like a full best and a full worst. These are the semantical things that keep me up at night. And so I might do like a best and worst skincare kind of thing because you know, just cause something's not in my skincare routine doesn't mean that I don't think it's great. You know, there's just only so much room for like AHAs or like retinols or whatever in one person's routine. So that said, like I said, the next one is gonna be my regrets video and that one's gonna be fun. <laughs> I have a lot of big fails from this year that you know, if you've been watching the whole time probably won't come as any surprise to you. I still think it's fun to relive that stuff, but then will come the like best of the best video. And then I don't know, I mean, I, I'm still gonna have some time at the end of the year for that, but I don't know, all of the videos that I would typically make and the ones I've been making over the last week or so that are just regular product reviews, it's so hard during December. Like all of your content has to fight through this noise because I don't know if you guys realize this, but the reason Vlogmas exists is because, and I don't want to blame this on like Ingrid or something who like invented Vlogmas. It might not have been the reason that she like decided to do Vlogmas, but like the reason that it has gained so much popularity is kind of this snake eating its tail. Advertisers are going to pay so much more per thousand views or per thousand impressions or whatever in December than they do any other time of year. And so creators who have a very reliable base of people who are going to watch their videos, whether they post every single day, um, those creators are really, you know, maxing out that year end bonus in some way. I'm going in with the uh, Becca under eye brightening corrector. And I like to kind of warm it up on the back of my hand before I put it on. So you don't end up with like this really thick coat of castor oil underneath your eyes, but you don't need much to really like get the color correction. So that's nice. And I also like to put that kind of over my mustache area, my melasma before I do my concealer. Yeah, that's why you see the creators kind of going ham in December is because they're making so much more per view than they normally would for the rest of the year. But I think it's also like a chicken or the egg thing because I think that the high volume of views on YouTube in general is what makes advertisers more competitive for that traffic in December anyway and willing to pay more for it. They budget more for it. And so it is this vicious cycle of so much more content coming out that someone like me, my regular old videos that aren't these like hype, hype, hype holiday videos yet 
are, you know, just having trouble kind of fighting through the noise. So I mean, no shade on those creators. Good for them, girl, get your money. <laughs> but like, that's why I feel like, I don't know, it's a little discouraging for smaller creators. And I'd rather save my like, you know, just regular review content for January when everybody's actually got like time to watch. So that was the Milk Flex Foundation on top of the Hydro Grip Primer and a little bit of the Becca Color Corrector. Now I'm gonna go in with the 16 hour camo concealer from e.l.f. I ordered a bunch of e.l.f. stuff to the tune of like $35 just because I wanna do a how clean is e.l.f. video for you guys, but I can't necessarily speak to you know, whether or not this is a perfect product yet, I don't know, but I did try, you know, to do my research, take a discerning eye, I guess you would say, to the ingredients list before I pulled the trigger on it. But a lot of what I found on their website was that the main not clean thing about their, like their foundations and stuff like that tends to be fragrance. And fragrance isn't always a bad thing for everyone. I don't wanna like vilify it at all times, but it depends on how much fragrance. And in America, we're not required to disclose what the fragrance actually is. And one of the things that I, oh my God, that's so pretty. <gasps> what? That's beautiful. I hope it doesn't dry down much more than that, but that's so smooth. <sighs> what? That is so pretty. Oh my gosh. And I actually got it in the right shade too. It is Fair Rose. I do like to use concealers that have a little bit of pink in them. I feel like they help with, uh-oh, dries fast. Dries down real fast, guys. I talk way too much. It dries down really fast, be careful, oh my goodness. Well, I'm glad that it dries so quickly because when you do work it down, you don't get a whole lot of creasing. That is lovely. That is lovely. I like that so much. Huh, ooh. I'm actually gonna go in with some Westman Atelier huh, uh, of the, the Biscuit. <laughs> the Biscuit, it's the cream contour. And this is just something that I've been doing lately to make it a little easier on myself, not have to put so, so much powder product on my face. And I really, really like this delivery system. This thing is really nice and blendy. Here's a little uh, Kardashian tip. I don't know, I just, I mainly observe their makeup when it looks really nice. Like when I'm watching the show, I'm just like always just clocking and I'm like, ooh, what is the shape of that eyeshadow? What is your contour shape, you know? And one of the things that I see them do or their makeup artists do is put a little bit of contour right there. Like I don't hate having a really angular jawline, but softening it a little bit goes a long way towards just, I don't know, giving me more of like an oval, face shape. I really enjoyed <laughs> Jamie French's makeup video where she referred to the like makeup rules outlined in the cosmetology textbook, the Milady cosmetology textbook. I too am a licensed hairstylist. I just haven't done it in a long time, but I did hair for eight years professionally. And <laughs> that textbook is amazing because you know, yes, these are like, a lot of it has to do with geometry and stuff like that, but it also is dated, you know? And there's all these kind of like really hard line rules that like shouldn't be rules, like that, you know, an oval face shape is the ideal face shape and everyone should be working towards that kind of thing. Like, I'm like, not necessarily. <laughs> Like, not necessarily. And then there's like this very exaggerated, like, is your face a reverse pyramid? You're like, I don't know. I never wanted to think of myself that way, you know? I just kind of pick up bits and pieces of like makeup advice everywhere. I don't necessarily want to put on as much contour as Tati, but if you contour a little bit around your lips, Scott Barnes style, just a little bit, you know, you can still get that plumpness without necessarily, I don't know, being so clockable. I had an e.l.f. powder. I, I threw it across the room because it made me crazy. I cannot stand drugstore packaging and I know it serves a purpose, but I don't care. <laughs> it's super frustrating. There was like inside of this like Fort Knox level plastic packaging that I almost cut my hand on. And then it had one sticker over the grate for the powder. And then once I got that one off, there was another sticker on there. I thought I was losing my mind. So I just threw it across the room. We'll figure it out later. But for today, I'm going in with Hourglass because it is guaranteed to perform. It is so, so beautiful. And my goodness, I don't know whether that is the primer or whether that is the concealer or whether that is the foundation or what, but my skin looks incredible. It looks so, so pretty. 
I really, 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 really like that concealer and it's not expensive at all. It's probably like $8. <laughs> Feeling very pretty, very pretty. This is the second time that I've done this, by the way. Typically, I forget to turn my microphone on. This time I remembered to turn it on, but the battery was dead, so. Oh, one of the most exciting things we're going to be trying today is this. This is going to come a little bit later, but these are the new highlighters from Aether Beauty, guys. Tyla, you know, she makes these beautiful eyeshadow palettes. Well, she has translated all of that yummy velvety goodness into a highlighter, actually two highlighters, and they have crushed up diamonds in them, like sustainably sourced diamonds. Fantastic. And then also we're gonna be trying the Shared Planet eyeshadow palette today. So just, you know, why? I'm gonna go with my Lawless bronzer here, Golden Hour. I think I love the Hourglass powder so much because it really always sets my face up for more powder product in a better way than so many other <laughs> setting powders. There are a lot of setting powders that do a really good job of kind of preserving the dewiness of your skin while still setting your makeup, like they don't over mattify. This somehow, keeps away from like over mattifying me, no matter how much I put on, it still has this nice luminosity to it without being like iridescent, but it still makes everything set down in a way that I can still like, you know, I don't feel like my brush is grabbing on anything else. So <laughs> going in with more hourglass here, I'm going to kind of mix these two shades right there, the bronzer and this like, I don't know, kind of mauvey shade. This has been my go-to lately. I feel like not only are these shades beautiful and kind of the iridescence is beautiful, but the texture of the product itself on these hourglass ambient lighting palettes is just so blurring on your skin that you end up with like, I don't know, better skin even than the, your foundation was able to give you just because of, you know, putting this nice blurring uh, blush and bronzer on top, so. To those of you who recommended that I try Hourglass for so many years, and I, I don't know if I resisted or what, but <laughs> I apologize. I apologize to past me, I apologize to everyone. So I'm going in with the kind of pinkier guy up here in the corner. This is the one I can't really get on board with. It's just a little too cherry red for me, and I feel like every time I use it, I regret it. <laughs> so I just don't. But I do really, really still like this one, the She's Seductive Monochrome Moment from Patrick Ta. It is this beautiful movie shade and it's not super duper pigmented. And I feel like it just adds this depth without adding really any like iridescence or anything. And a lot of what I've been doing lately that serves a perfectly good purpose, we talk about this a lot, but like I'm back in the mode of doing it, I guess you could say, is just using like that hourglass palette and this guy and even my bronzer and stuff as eye makeup. I feel like it does a really, really nice job. So that is absolutely lovely. I'm getting a little bit of a glow around my eyes, but that's mostly just the lighting. When I see myself in the mirror right now, <sighs> this concealer from e.l.f. is amazing. It's so, so, so pretty, it's super lightweight. It's like the perfect level of coverage and the dry down is so pretty. Like it's just smooth. I can't ask for more. All right, I'm gonna go in with my Thrive Cosmetics Waterproof Primer. And this is actually something you can use underneath your concealer as well. Like if you have a tendency for your concealer to move around underneath your eyes or if you have a zit that you are really trying to cover it can be an amazing like waterproofing primer for putting concealer or anything on top of a spot treatment kind of basis. And it'll keep that from budging all day. So really, really good in that respect. I love that Thrive does that. Every time they put out a product, they really test everything that it can do. And so they don't just tell you, oh, this is an eye primer. They're like, no, this actually works a lot of different ways. Um, they've done the same thing with the uh, the CC cream. You know, they're like, hey, if you mix a little bit of the powder with the CC cream, you can get like a matte CC cream and it actually works beautifully. It'll increase the coverage, things like that. So I just always love them for that. Okay, let's go into eyes, guys. Ooh, ew. <laughs> so this is the Shared Planet Tiger Collection eyeshadow palette, and it is nothing short of absolutely beautiful. I was a little nervous when I received this, and then I was like, wait a second, I didn't check on like where this is manufactured, because I don't know, 
I just watched that Broken documentary and I'm just a little leery of manufacturing practices, but this is made in Canada. So that's pretty cool. And I like supporting Canadian brands. People get really excited on my channel when they're like, you know, my late video, they're like, thank you for supporting a Canadian brand. I feel like Canada is just underappreciated. I kind of feel like a secret Canadian sometimes. You guys are like the, the indie brand of America, of North America. So going in with Siberian, which is just this really lovely matte cream shade. And I'm going with my Big Fat Wing Gloss Brush and I'm just setting my primer. This is such a great brush <laughs> because you don't end up gumming up all your brushes trying to set your primer. You just kind of dust it on like you would any other makeup product, but it's like the perfect size and shape to get like right in there and set it without getting a whole bunch of drag so that you don't end up with like creasiness right there. Isn't that nice? I love it. All right, gonna go in with the 03 brush from the Wayne Goss collection and I'm going to, what do we wanna do? I don't really wanna go too, too warm. I think I'm gonna go more in these like berry tones over here. Sometimes it's amazing, sometimes it gets me in trouble, but we will see. So I'm gonna go in with Fiery, which is this really pretty kind of like, I don't know, it's like a rosy brown. I have been helping out some clients. Wow, that's so pigmented. I'm actually gonna mix that with Siberian. The, the white that we started with. I've been helping out some new clients, consulting wise, with starting their channels. And I have to like remember what it was like when I first started doing makeup videos because this is actually one of the hardest things, talking while putting makeup on. Like do not ever sell short the skills that it takes to be able to actually put on like a really involved eye makeup look and make like, cohesive sentences at the same time. Raw Beauty Christy, she makes no big deal of her incredible makeup talent. She's always just like, yeah, no big deal, you know, whatever. I just like do some eye makeup or whatever. That girl has not only got mad skills, she's got them on autopilot because she can sit there and actually make clear, continuous, articulate thoughts while applying makeup to her face in a very, very beautiful and advanced way. I just don't know how people do that. My skills just aren't really there yet, but I do feel like, well, those are uneven. This is too dark. I just kind of uh, didn't follow Tati's warning where she says, you know, if you make the mistake on one side, you have to make it on both sides. I prefer this eye, but we'll just go ahead and make the mistake on both sides here. This is definitely a palette that challenges someone who has the uh, like super pale skin like I do. It tends to be very contrasty if you use the colors at their face value. I do find that I have to lean on the pale shades a lot, but that's not super uncommon for me. If I were to only focus on palettes that had pale enough shades that I could use every single one just as is, I would rule out a lot of palettes for myself. I think that there are just, you know, ways that you have to accommodate your skin tone with any palette. And for me, it's leaning on these kind of like, you know, out shades, like I call them. So that's absolutely beautiful. Gonna kind of blend that into my brow bone a little bit. So we have a nice transition situation going and I'm going to go in next with Predator, which is this regular kind of like chocolatey brown. Do I wanna go in with that big of a brush is the question. Yeah, I'm gonna go in with the 04, which is slightly smaller. And I'm just gonna kind of build a little curvy crease here. Uh, yeah. Gonna kind of also build a little halo situation right on the inner corner and I'm gonna draw kind of a diagonal line like this. Does, does that, like, I would never have thought to do that, but it like immediately opens up my eyelid. And I only know that because I just like study pictures of people's eye makeup. <laughs> like I finally realized that like, I can't figure this all out on my own. <laughs> Like just doing it the same way over and over again isn't teaching me anything. And that some of these shapes that you have to use to like, make your eyes look bigger or maybe just not make them look smaller <laughs> in my case is, uh, you know, there are professionals who know better than you. And for whatever reason, even though I'm on YouTube and I know that that is the case, I still, Aries, just think I know better. These blend really beautifully. They have very clean ingredients. They're talc free. And I highly recommend checking them out because what they're doing is really, really cool. So I said I was gonna go for like the more mauve stuff, but we're just not really there yet. We're just more in the browns right now. So these are the three kind of pinkier shimmers. So that is Sheer Khan, uh, Paw Print, and Bangle. And hmm. I think the answer is paw print. 
satisfying. I'm gonna go with that on the lid here. This is what made me fall in love with this palette and make me want to kind of, you know, pull the trigger on it to begin with, was these really gorgeous freaking glitter shimmer shades. Like, look at that thing. Oh, that color is so gorgeous, come on. Like, yeah, I could probably go for a, uh, like a glitter glue or something or like reprime because I'm getting tons of fallout. Like tons of fallout, like, like tons, I should. I'm going to add a little more primer. Not something I always recommend doing, putting like liquid down on top of powder, but this is gonna require just a little bit more tackiness to make that glitter stick without falling out everywhere. Let's try that again. Paw print. There we go. Yes, queen. Yeah, and with the primer, you actually get more of the duochrome because it actually goes pink gold. And it is so flattering on my skin tone, especially with these other shades that I put on there with it. Like it just pops. <sighs> Love it. Oh my God. Y'all, I don't usually just have a fit over eyeshadow, but that's so pretty. That is so, so pretty. Uh, uh, I just got eyeshadow on my cheek. Come on, khaki. So I'm just adding a little tiny bit more of Predator mixed with Fiery. So that's the brown and kind of the rosy brown right on the outer corner here. Give us a little bit more drama drama. And then I will actually like, you know, basically that's building shadow and then we will also build light in the corners and on the brow bone and it'll just kind of like activate everything. I am also going to go in with like a little BB brush, if I can find one. Yeah, hello. And I'm gonna go underneath my lash line with Fiery. Look at that. Oh yeah. And there aren't any like just regular cream shimmers, it's all glitter and matte. So you kind of have to keep that in mind with this palette. You know, it's gonna be harder to blend. You kind of just have to use lighter shades to blend with. So I'm gonna use Siberian and Fiery, that rosy color and the white, and just sort of blow that lash line out. That's a little much. Oh God, I don't think I realized how much was on that brush. Hold please. <laughs> Okay, so I took that as a small opportunity to clean up just a little bit underneath my eyes. I used the hourglass powder and just kind of, you know, broke up the damage a little. <laughs> Makes a big difference actually. And I went ahead and did my brows because my camera battery is dying. So that is the best we're gonna get in terms of cleaning up underneath my eyes right now. I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of paw print, the really pretty like iridescent pink shade and I'm going to put that kind of right in the middle here and brighten up that. And then something that I love, love, love to do is to take a little bit of like the palest glitter right here and just place it right in the center, like on the lid almost, on the lid, on the lash line is what I mean. Um, and it's just going to add this little tiny glint of extra like brightness right there and it makes your eyelids look like they're a little deeper. Very, very pretty palette, love this very, very much. Let's go ahead and just use my Brilliant Eye Brightener from Thrive. This is just my thing that I lean on all the time. And I'm going to very subtly do my brow bone here and my inner corner. Because most palettes don't have a shade that I really love for my inner corner because I do need it to be so pale. And also getting a brush or my finger into this tiny corner of my inner eye area, it's so messy. Like this is the best way that I have found to just not get stuff everywhere. Okay, I will put on some, probably some more blush, um, some eyeliner maybe, some mascara definitely, and some brow mousse for sure, and I will be right back. Guys, 
I am not exaggerating when I say that this eyeshadow palette takes my breath away. Like getting up close on this eye look, the pink, and I used uh, the deepest brown shade as just an eyeliner. I just dampened uh, like a little stubby brush and I just used it as a really quick little eyeliner. And uh, I put my mascara on, just getting a little bit of that mascara off my eye here. I, I love it. And there are a lot of other looks you can do in this palette because obviously I just went for like the pinks and the browns, but you can also go this really like fiery orange kind of area. And then you can also go in this like very deep, These are, this is actually kind of shifts green a little bit. Um, and then there's, you know, the black that I could have gone with for like, you know, major drama, but once again, we found ourselves in that place where I've done my eye makeup and it makes me realize that I need more blush. So let's do that. Gonna go in with the pinker shade here and a little more of it and just pop, 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 pop on the cheek there like that. And then speaking of pop, I feel like we, I didn't really mean to, but we saved the absolute most exciting for last and that is Aether Beauty's new highlighters. I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of the like palest, the sort of bronzer shade in here on that same brush that I used to put down like the whole base shade on my eyeshadow. And I'm gonna use that as just kind of a mixing medium to make sure this looks really blended and at home here. I like to have a little bit of a curve right there because it does make my eye look like it's contoured in a nice way and lifted, but I don't want there to be this like really harsh line because the chances that I got them symmetrical is very low. <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to go in with the Cover FX because I think the Cover FX uh, highlighter, it's just a different kind of highlighter. It doesn't really have a whole lot of shimmer to it. And I just want to use that to build like what I would call like a blurred base kind of, that's more pigmenty than textury. So then I will take that smaller brush, the Wayne Goss one, and I will dip that into Tyla's highlighter here. Tyla's the owner, sorry. And like I use Aether and Tyla interchangeably. So here we go. Yeah, I would definitely liken that to the Fenty, oh my God, yes, exactly. It's exact. it reminds me so much of it because it doesn't have any pigmented backing to it. It just gives this like light catching sort of wet look to the skin. And it's something that's really fun to play with because it's not covering up the rest of your makeup, you know? You can use it to add a textural element on top of anything and you don't lose the contour and the blush and everything that you built. That's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think the last thing to do here is to do my lips and then, uh, then we'll give it a spritz, which is like my favorite part because it just makes everything just like melt together. So I'm gonna go in with the Patrick Ta She's, uh, what is she? She's proud. <laughs> and uh, it is a beautiful lip liner and I've been using this, like I said, as like a lip cheat because it's so similar to my lip color. And this delivery system is fantastic. This like flat thing. And I'll even like overline just a little in the middle cause I can get away with it with this color. And my lips look bigger, but they do look conspicuously lined. But then I will take the Kosa's wet oil. This is what I've been doing so, so much lately. And put that on top and then blend it in. Cause it's just clear. So it just acts as a blending medium for that hard line. And even if I wore that with like a totally chill, like all cream face of makeup, you wouldn't necessarily clock that as like lip liner. You would just say like, that's, you know, her lips look bigger. <laughs> like what lip gloss is that kind of thing? Okay, here we go. Not too much because I have a lot of powder products on my face and this is super emollient. This is the Anami Radical Setting Mist and it has such great smoothing properties to it. You don't need to use a ton. Like I used to soak 
my skin with the Smashbox because I felt like more was better. Uh, just a little bit of this or else it will kind of start to make your pores show a little bit just because it has a little more weight to it, so. Well, mission accomplished. I feel beautiful right now. So let's recap on the products. I think that this is absolutely gorgeous, the Milk Flex Stick, but stay tuned because the next How Clean Is video is going to be a How Clean Is Milk makeup, and I'm gonna deep dive on these ingredients and we will find out for sure whether I recommend them on an actual ingredients basis for who and for anyone kind of thing, but they're absolutely gorgeous. This really works. Like this is a really, really pretty primer and it makes my makeup go on so, so nicely. I think one of the big winners of the day today is this, the e.l.f. concealer. It's a 16 hour camo concealer. And like I said, I got it in fair rose. I didn't really get to finish that thought earlier. Too many things going on, but I don't mind using something that has a little bit of a pink undertone uh, on my concealer because concealer, I typically need color cancellation as well. And then the pink really helps. Oh, also the Becca color cancellation helps a lot too. Just make sure you don't use too, too much of it. You really don't need much. I am so impressed with this brand and with this palette in particular. They do have another one. I forget what it's called, but it is like much more like blues. So if you're into cool tones, girl, they got you. They actually got you uh, with this collection. They made sure to kind of cover both angles. So it's so pretty, it's so creamy. Like I said, it's made in Canada. And the shade choices, I know this is kind of the point of an eyeshadow palette, but they give you so many little pockets of ideas. There's so many different ways to go. And this paw print shade, the like light pink that I put on my eyelid, it's, it's giving me life. It's making me so freaking happy right now. So yeah, and this is truly, even though it's really exciting, it's an all-in-one palette because I was able to get an eyeliner out of it. I was able to get a highlight shade out of it. I was able to get everything that I needed out of this one palette without ever thinking about dipping in someplace else. So yeah, um, very, very impressed with it. You can tell that there's just been a lot of thought put into this too. You know, it's not just like, oh, we did a brown and a medium brown. It's like, no, we also want to do this kind of mauve brown. We think that that will be really helpful for you. And it was, it made all the difference in the world in making this look at home on my face. So yeah, if you're complected, slightly warm, if you like warm palettes, but also I would say, you know, neutral and deep skin tones. Oh my God, deep skin tones. This is going to give you so much color punch on deep skin tones. You're going to absolutely love it. So yeah, for people who are pale like me, I do have to lean on that pale shade a lot to get it to not be so, so high contrast, but it does blend really beautifully. But if you've got a medium to deep skin tone, this is going to be so much fun for you. So much fun. The only other really, really big like new product that we tried here today was, uh, was this. And it also comes in pink diamond dust. So I'll swatch both. So you can see the, the difference in the shade value there. The pink diamond dust is a little bit more golden toned, but they are both really universal just because they don't have any color backing to them. So they're not going to be too dark for some skin tones or too light for some skin tones. It is literally just the color of the shimmer itself. And you have the, the regular diamond one is gonna be more neutral to, I don't even, it's not silver, it's just neutral. And the other one is going to be more like champagne gold, but definitely not like a warm orangey gold. So those are unbelievable. There's 20% off at Aether Beauty down below underneath my videos. And I highly encourage you to check them out uh, and their eyeshadow palettes too. I will list everything else that I used on my face down below in case you missed anything, but this has been so much fun. I'm in such a better mood now. You know, I just, making yourself like look really pretty can just change the course of your whole day. I don't know, it's just one of those little things. And I love being able to have a community where I can just get on camera sometimes and hang out with you guys and play with makeup. So thank you for hanging out with me today and for watching. If you have any additional questions about any of these products, feel free to ask down below. I know this wasn't an exhaustive review of every single one of them. So I'm happy, happy, happy to provide more color if you need it. But uh, if you did enjoy this guys, do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today, guys. Um, like I said, the roundups are coming next. The next video will be my big yearly regrets video and it'll just keep going from there. Keep an eye out for those. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.